Dun, 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 dun. Let's time the podcast. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Netflix Explorers podcast, the podcast where we shoot and tear apart these movies, but we don't kill any of them because we're like the 18 from the 1890 studios. My name is Dale. Aloha, Adamo. And my name's Patrick, and I'm still trying to figure out what he just said. Today we're going over the details. Godless and Jim and Andy, please, please stick around. Gentlemen, the studio is quiet. We are just three guys, three mics. Do you think that ukulele got picked up? That's a mandolin, Adam? Right. (laughs) (laughs) So what's going on, guys? It's a a quiet cast, man. Just us three. Just back to our roots. I know. I'm kind of like... Trying to spread out as much as possible after last week. Yeah. Shoulder to shoulder between Big Adam and Big Rob. Right. It was rough. So uh, how'd, uh, how'd this week go? Watching these movies, getting them done. What'd you think? Well, I've watched all of them in the last 24 hours. Oh, nothing, so you're fresh. Nothing new. That's the S- best way to do same it. Same here. That's the best way to do yeah. it, I think. I will say one of them I was wishy-washy, one of them I was on board with, and one of them has changed my world. <sighs> Save for the cast. Oh, oh. No. <laughs> this well, is it's, the cast. This, that's the best thing about the podcast is we've been texting each other twenty four hours, like the past twenty four hours. Right. Save, save for the cast. Yeah, don't 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 blow it. So, what's up, Adam? How was this? How was your viewing? You're back to the Daca Master again. Yes, how I you am. feeling? You re- reclaimed your title. Yeah, yeah, I feel like I pretty much just destroyed this docket, nailed it. It's fantastic. <laughs> I think, uh, yeah, I think we all know now. The master crown is yeah. right is a you true know title for myself. You so. know it. I know it. I disagree. We with all know that. it. Everybody knows it. Well. Everybody knows it. Uh, first one up, the details. Right, we're gonna do that one. Twenty eleven film. When a family of raccoons discovers worms living underneath the sod in <laughs> Jeff and Neely's backyard, Sorry. this pest prowl Sorry. begins a raccoon. Keep going. Sorry. This pest prowl begins a darkly comic and wild chain reaction of domestic tension, infidelity, and <laughs> murder. <laughs> Go ahead and roll a trailer. 6.2 IMDb. God, raccoons. Raccoons. What's wrong with a little raccoon? Oh, dude, that's, that's funny. All right, let's hit it. You know in life, when Toby something McGuire? disastrous happens. Of Spider-Man fame? You go back and replay everything. You see where it all went wrong. You're sifting through all the little things. All of the details. So what are we talking about here? I have a surprise for you. Come on in. Mm-hmm. Is Mr. Virgin Mary being unfaithful? When was the last time you and Neely had sex? What is she from? What is uh she's from Scandal? Okay. I, did it. I don't oh, know. No, her name. You know what she's from? Uh, Django to, Unchained. How to get away yep. with murder? Was something, uh, something Washington. Okay. Fear name. You wrecked my home, Jeffrey. Ray Dude, Liotta. Ray Liotta. What a stud. I couldn't believe it was in this. Call. There's something I need to tell you. Remember what she's I'm from? With your baby. What, what, what? She's the wife in Ozark. Oh, oh you're right. Yeah. That's what Julie, Julie was watching so She's like, what is she person. from? I can barely see straight. Things I'm thinking you know what the uh, wow. wow wow Neely so far this has been the good news Toby McGuire Elizabeth Kerry Hunt. Washington The details, Adam. You picked it. You, I mean, you're behind it. Why did you do this to us? I should say. What? <laughs> <laughs> dude, wow. You know, you know that I hate, dude. Oh dude, yeah. I, oh yeah. That's right. I forget who was asking me that. Yeah. <laughs> so yes. So I could, what'd you think about this one? Talk to me. Well, Tom McGuire. Well, first of all, I could totally see why you would not like this. Okay, movie. good. And explain to our listeners why. 
because and our live feed. Viewers. It's Toby McGuire. It's a well. Here, let me back up. Back so, up the truck. I was very lukewarm about this movie. I was like, eh, it's okay. Uh, do I like it? Do I hate it? Did I you see it in the past before adding it to the docket? No. Okay. So I was kind of like, do I like it? Do I hate it? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Watching the trailer right now kind of reminded me of the movie, and I was like, you know what? I think I kind of like this movie. Okay. And but I can see why you would not like that because Tony McGuire. It's about Tony McGuire, and he makes the worst decisions. Oh, okay. And Good. his life just falls apart. Right. And. And it's very awkward and anxious, and I can see Dale just like walking around, pacing around yes. his room, like, "What are you doing, Tommy?" <laughs> like, just I can totally picture I, you. Do- I talk like Alex Jones when I watch. <laughs> but I think ultimately, I think it's a good movie. Yeah. Oh, okay. But one I bet Patrick liked it. <laughs> one man's opinion. Patrick, looking at you, what do you think, man? I wasn't on board for the first half of the movie. But I was on board for the second half. Okay. And I found myself watching the first half. I'm like, how is Tobey Maguire's face the same in every scene? Like, I know oh. I know he's saying different things. He's got different emotions. But every time I look at his physical face, it's the it's exact the same, same expression. like, deadpan look on his yeah. face. And then towards the end, he starts, like, uh, unraveling what we've already seen and all that good stuff. And that's when I was like, okay, I'm on board for now. And we'll see where it right. goes. But, yeah. Something that, okay, Adam pointed out, the awkward, the anxious, yeah, it rose me the wrong way. First thing on my list, of course. Next thing was, uh, I have a note here, 36 minutes in. What, what, is, what are we trying to do here? What's the point? You know, we talk about that seven-minute mark where, you know, we like to know where the you know, protagonist is going and what's happening. 36 minutes in, all we know is that this guy's just kind of a dweeby bro. Uh, it didn't really, the story didn't really pick up and didn't start driving for 36 minutes. It's a long time to wait. I don't know. First well, thing I saw. Let me tell you, uh, for, if I may, p- cut on that point. I'll allow it. Okay, thank you. Uh, permission to approach the bench. Um, <laughs> Overruled. Sidebar, Your Honor. Uh, so Permission to treat the witness as hostile. <laughs> so, what what hooked me was the beginning where they talk about the details. Like if it wasn't for this plant, if it wasn't for this, um, if it wasn't cheese for this plate, cheese plate, cheese plate, if it sure. wasn't for this right. raccoon or whatever, there's a lot. Raccoon. So it sets up a like raccoon. it sets up like eight or ten things that like if it, it weren't for this, it weren't for this, yeah. my life would be totally different. Yes. So I think that kind of hooked me in a way that okay. we're thirty six minutes in, I wasn't like, oh, where are we going? Where are we going? I'm like. I was like taking notes while I was watching the movie. It was, was like, setting things in place. Do I need to remember everything? Right. Like that they just talked about in the opening two minutes, but throughout the movie it it reminds you and it and it and it plays in it kept me hooked. Okay. At least. No, I think um yeah, you're right. It does lay a slow base layer in the beginning where they just set things in motion. And then, you know, if this then that, you know, the classic uh yeah. uh you know the classic term it's a butterfly effect movie exactly so i did not like his i did not like how toby mcguire made a lot of his decisions <laughs> it just frustrated me he's so the worst much. he's it's a terrible he's a terrible person because in, sa- in the same way we do if you do this you know if this then that um if he didn't do this then he wouldn't have that so that's all this i'm watching this movie as is going like why are you doing this because it wouldn't affect that you know um but anyway, I don't know, Patrick. What are you going to fight me on this one? Yeah, I, I, push back. I don't want to love to fight you, but right. I like to talk. Just give me a little pushback. Um, yeah, the, well, they're they're setting it up, and you can't you can't have a movie without him making bad decisions. That's true. What would what would a movie be if it was just you can't pleasant? oop it without an alley? <laughs> well put. <laughs> yeah, uh, that's not. I'll, I'll I'll make a better one, guys. So I'll come back. Yeah, we'll add it to the doc. We'll add it to the website. Though. Maybe not glossary. Anyway, moving on. Go ahead. But no, I I think I was sitting there. I'm like, why is he doing this? Why is he doing this? But then they throw it back like, oh, well, this hasn't happened in like a year now. So this is why he's feeling this. So I can understand where the character is coming from in that sense. But right. he's also not making the best decisions. Right. When he could be working somewhere else, he's not working where he should be. So I don't think we actually did. I mean, I read the <laughs> synopsis, uh, you know, that we have here from IMDb, but Tobey Maguire is a doctor. His wife, Elizabeth Banks, is a... I think she's just a... Homemaker? Yeah. No, 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 no. She did something with uh, fabrics. 
Okay. She she ran her own shop. Okay, so she's got her own shop. Okay, so really this follows Toby Maguire and like the decisions he makes. He is uh, trying to do some stuff. The beginning starts off where he wants to add like an addition on the house for a potential next baby or something. Maybe. Yeah, the nursery. And uh, he can't get permits for this, so he's just going to go ahead without the permits and just kind of go. You're, you know, going to go around. Willy-nilly. Which is, you know, something a homeowner does. I saw him do that, and I said, you know what? I almost didn't get a permit for the thing I, you know, I put some a concrete patio in at my house, and I almost did. I did get a permit. Guys, don't come after okay. me. It's uh, up to standard. So anyway, so it starts off, so we, you know, and he's got problems with his neighbor. There's like a crazy cat lady neighbor whose wife is the, or who, the Ozark wife, Jason Bateman's wife in Ozark, um, and she Manipulates as she needs to. I'm gonna dance around this a little bit, but um, but she she kind of plays like a she's she's not as sane as like a normal person would be. Sure, she's kind of living alone like a crazy cat lady. Yeah, and she gets into a position where she can I, not so much manipulate, but like strong arm. Right. Uh, not Jason Bateman. Uh, Toby Maguire. Yeah, Toby Maguire into right. And, but she puts she backs him into a corner. And he's got a reaction sure. one way or another, and so. Uh, he befriends the Allstate spokesman. You're you're wrong. He's President David Palmer from 24. Oh, 24, right. Yeah. He wears um, many hats. And so I don't want to blow this. In fact, I'm not going to blow it. But at one point, Tobey Maguire goes into surgery. And now my wife, ER nurse, is watching this with me. For, she's yelling, all caps, if she was texting this to me. Um, so he's intubated. He's got the He's got the straw down the throat. He's wa- he's awake. He's looking around. He's awake. If you're intubated, you're not awake. So Julie was off. Julie was pissed, throwing remotes at the TV. She was going crazy. Also, uh, he was like placed wrong on the bed to get a the procedure he was going through was incorrect. I don't know. Like I won't go into it. But Julie was really pissed off that the the he was a doctor in the movie, and then his surgery scene was incorrectly done. Movies just trash. Because of that. My wife is also a nurse. Right. And what I learned with being married to a nurse and watching movies with them is any movie with medical stuff is always wrong. Every time. It's got to be so painful to watch a movie as a medical professional knowing that everything's wrong. Now, I think there's a market for that. I think Jenna, your wife, Julie, my wife, go into business. They start J&J Enterprises. And they... (laughs) Go to Hollywood to just be um, consultants. Maybe, maybe cons- they start a podcast. Consultants and a pod and podcasters. Obviously, and well, they, they blast movies that don't adhere to medical practices. They, and all it is is they're well, watching Doctor House. Is all they're. Doing. <laughs> well, if they did do that podcast, it's kind of a crapshoot because I mean, if you go into a movie expecting a medical scene, like you don't get it. I mean, they're going to invest a lot of time. I think they should probably stick to the consulting side of it. Well, there's yeah. enough medical shows. Yeah, oh, medical you, shows? No, you start the podcast to get your name out there. Right. Uh, That's when they start stir hiring up, yeah, you. Yeah, stir up the Because they don't want to end up on the podcast mm. getting bitched at by the the nurse. The J&J. The nurse call-outers. Yeah. Title pending. But Yeah, we're going to anyway. work on J&J Industries. Yeah. Um, let's see. Uh, what else do I got around? Toby McGuire as a sleazeball, which... Sleazeball, I don't know if is the word. That's what I wrote down in my notes. But to see his character in this light... Very different. I guess, did you see Spider-Man 3? No, I didn't know there was more than one. Dude, he became a real sleazeball in Spider-Man 3. Really? Was he Spider-Man 3 in this movie? No, he was was better than Spider-Man 3. Let's talk about his sleaze level. In Spider-Man 3, let's just say he gets a shot with Mary Jane and he doesn't take it. Oh, sad. In a very peculiar way. Does he kiss her upside down again? That's the best way to go. No. Little tip from the no. uh, Netflix Explorers podcast. He was so innocent in Spider-Man 1. And now look how far he's gone. Oh, falling. Toby. Ray Liotta, dynamite. Oh, love Ray. Savage. He's a beast. I was so pumped when he was in this movie. He's a bro. Did um, you know he was in the movie when you signed it up? No. No? Oh, dude, that's, a that's a great surprise. surprise. <laughs> Whoa. He's <laughs> weird to say. Uh, all right, guys. I mean, I don't know how much we can... We can go on this, or let's do let's do rewatch recommend and unless you got something to add. Yeah, no, I'll just say it is a dark comedy. It's a uh, yes, dark comedy. So indeed. that's why I thought Patrick would like it because it's right. Really, ooh, it was, uh, ooh. but it's a uh, it's it's good. It's got a good cast. I I think overall well, it's I'm, a good movie, and I will I'll agree with you. Acting wise, the actors did so great that they made me 
I mean, Tobey Maguire needed to be a sleazeball. Did such a good job. I hated him for it. You know what I mean? Like, like yeah. this, everyone well, played their job so well that it made me hate it so much. If that, that's perfect. That's exactly how yeah. you should feel. Exactly. Movie. Yeah. Okay. When I when I was watching it, I was so the first half of it, I'm watching. I'm like, the best character right now is the wife from Ozark, and like she's like the crazy person. So when that knows, I'm like, when the craziest person in the cast is your best actor, you got a problem. Okay. But then like that's true. the second half of the movie really redeemed it for me, and the ending kind of like really really redeemed it for me. And so. I will say the ending, how the ending works and stuff like that. Where we don't even touch the ending here at the Netflix Explorers podcast. We don't do it. We just give you a little taste. And the ending pulls this movie together. I, I mean, oh, let's go rewatch. Recommend. I'll tell yeah. you what I think. Yeah. So what rewatch. Got? I would say no. Probably not for me. Once is enough. Recommendability. I will say if you're if you're into dark comedies, if you can handle awkward dramas, if you like uh, sto- kind of more darker stories about. Right people it's very real i would it's, say yeah it's definitely a human tale yeah it's very sure. it's very real it's got some drama it's got some bl- dark humor it's uh so it's it's one of those uh and then I re- if you like that kind of thing then then go ahead and watch it sure how about you p funk yeah i'm definitely gonna recommend it but like you had to stick through all what is it 90 or no 101 minutes 101 that's out of the yeah. wheelhouse no you, right? that's in the wheelhouse what that's is it 15 right? minutes yeah. it's something to be added to the glossary page of 1890studios.com is the wheelhouse which is what 91 minutes right it's 90 minutes give or 15, take 15 15 plus or minus yeah. i got you so okay. it's somewhere in there but no um i think the first half is kind of grimy to get through right but the second half kind of it, the ball starts rolling down the hill, yeah. so you really get into it. And all the payoffs are there at the mm-hmm. end. All things. I, yeah, this, one of the payoffs, I'm, I'm watching it, and I'm like, this isn't happening, this isn't happening, this isn't happening. And then it happens, I was like, I yeah. did not see that coming, right. even though you wanted it. I wanted <laughs> it, so it was... Ugh. Yeah. Um. You know, rewatch for me is no. Like, Adam, I don't got to revisit this one. Recommend, I... You know, I don't know many people besides, I guess, you guys sitting here. A dark comedy, like a something like that. I just don't. I don't need to. Wa- I don't need to tell anybody to watch it. I mean, uh, my overall notes here at the very end, I put an idiot making stupid decisions all movie long. So it, it just frustrated me. But anyway, that's what makes the podcast great. We all have different opinions. Adam, liquor store aisle for this one, if you could. Uh, let me but get what, my notes. What do you have here written down? Patrick, don't take any offense to this. But I wrote down a Stella. I feel like Stella's a good beer. People like it. People enjoy it. Sure. It just, it, you hand me one, I'm not going to be disappointed. Sure. But I'm not going to be excited. Right. So that's kind of what it, what it felt like to me. It's just it's just average. Middle of the road. Middle of the road. I was kind of lukewarm on it. If someone's like, oh, I hate this movie, Dale. Yeah, I can see that. Patrick, oh, I kind of liked it. Yeah, yeah, me too. I kind of liked it too. Yeah, you see both sides. I kind of, it's just, I'm not excited. I'm not disappointed. Right. I'm just, I'm just me. Yeah. I'm just just average. Middle of the road. Yeah. Perfect. Patrick, Dick Lickerstraw Isle. So normally, like when I'm real sluggish in the morning, like I got to get through the first half of the day. You drink clan. Yeah, I know. No, no, no. Oh. Uh, I drink. Clan and black rifle. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, that'd be a bad. Uh, But no, it's like the the Mountain Dew kickstarts, like. They kind of get you going, but they're not as good as coffee. They're not really going to. Right. So I kind of gave this like a kickstart, but then like it was like a real bad morning. So I just added a splash of vodka to it Eesh. and I just kind of kept going. Yeah. So it kind of like leveled me out. And then when I got to the second half of the day, everything was better. So I gave it okay. AM clan and vodka, PM <laughs> day got better. <laughs> right. I got you. Ah, two drinks. Uh, I g- <laughs> well done. I like it. I like the mixture. Um, I have. Uh, one of your friends, let's just say, let's just use a guy named Adam, let's just say. And he, he's like, hey, man, you want something to drink? I'm like, yeah, sure. And he puts a glass down. Man, thanks. What a guy. He, he made me watch this movie. What a, you know, great. You know, I appreciate you doing that for me. And I take a sip and it's warm tequila. Oh. It's it's uh, Lope, uh, what is the? Pepe. Pepe. Lopez. It's Pepe Lopez warm tequila. You're like, oh, man, I appreciate you Doing this for me, like getting me a drink, was a nice act. But this is not good, and it does not taste good. It's it's just not. I apologize. Thank you, but no thanks. That's where I'm at. Thank you, but no thanks. I, I watched the whole I'll thing. I didn't rob it. 
but I just will not revisit that. Anyway, that you is, didn't rob it. I was because I because I popped on and you're like halfway through it. Oh no, I switched to a regular TV so my wife could watch. Oh, good. Uh, but nice trying to catch me in the act of half <laughs> robbing. It. That's the best part about sharing a Netflix account. Well, let's go into Godless. This is a 2017 series, a uh, miniseries. Frank Griffin, an outlaw terrorizing the 1880s, not the 1890 studios, the 1880s American West, hunts down Roy Good, his partner turned enemy. Roy hides out at a ranch as Frank's. As fr- uh, let's restart this. Roy hides, hides out at a ranch as Frank's chase leads him to La Belle, New Mexico, a town mysteriously made up of entirely of women. 8.5 IMDb, we'll go ahead and roll the trailer. Got some western scenes right now. Okay, first and foremost, this is the most gorgeous looking series I think I've ever seen. Game of Thrones and Westworld, you gotta watch them. Okay. Is a fearful thing to love what death can touch. Where are all the men at? Dead. Mine took them. All of them. How has the town fared without any men around? Someone's gotta look after things around here. A town full of ladies. Bang, bang. It's ripe fruit for the wicked. Western town. Frank Griffin's been looking for Roy Good. He's going to kill anyone that Roy so, cares about. Yet Good another thing. trailer Walk that is showing the entire series the in one trailer. Right. Yeah. He finds out who's living here. Sam Watterson of Law and Order fan. Yes. Dum, dum. Mr. Stud. We're a lot stronger than you think we are. Whoa. Language. My Netflix limited series. Jack O'Donnell, Mr. Dr. H. F. Daniels. Bad luck. Great we soundtrack. Common, man. This here's the land of the bleeding rough. It's godless country. Jeff Daniels with the titular line. Welcome to no man's land, godless. Let's all talk about this like civilized folks. Sure, come on in. I suggest we all first lower our weapons. Oh, <laughs> kneecap <Just> touch. <laughs> kneecapped indeed. That is Godless. I already read the description. 8.5 IMDb. This is a drama western. Um, seven episodes. This is a single series. A mini series. Complete, right? Yeah, I haven't seen any news about like a second season. Right. They said it was a limited series. It's like, what, seven episodes? Seven episodes, an hour long-ish. Uh, yeah, the first one's like an hour ten, hour so it's ten. a little bit more than uh, It could have been two hour. hours and I would have stuck around. Yeah, but this is a great one. Well, they have six more hours of it. Good. Okay, I got to keep going into that. Um, uh, Jeff Daniels. Awesome. 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 So, uh, uh, Adam, can you do a little setup for me? Episode one. Sure. We're only doing episode one. Let's blow it. Let's just blow it. Just so people can get a taste for even... Did you go beyond episode one? I did not. Patrick, episode... Oh. Okay, so we're all at episode one. Let's blow it. Let's blow yeah. episode one just so we can get a taste for the series. So talk to right. me, Adam. Well, before you guys start uh, saying, Adam, oh, you're the best docket master ever and how much I you appreciate my work. Way before we uh, say that. Right? So, yeah, yeah. Definitely. Okay. Uh, then... I, this movie was recommended to me at Christmas dinner from my cousin Joe, Joe Peller. Shout out to Joe. Shout out to Joe. Great recommendation. He's walking out of here with a bottle of, uh, what do we have for him? Early times? Or, well, no, what's our better uh, better bottle we Woodford have? Woodford Reserve. He's, got, yes. he's walking out of here with a bottle of Woodford Reserve. We're sending it right to him. Great recommendation. Every recommendation that we do bring on, you get a bottle of Woodford Reserve. So make sure, com. So I'm talking to him, and I'm talking about you know movies and stuff. He's like, how's the podcast going? I'm like, oh, dude, it's it's fantastic. We're loving it. We're having a great time, everything. He's like, he's like, well, yeah, what do you want? I'm like, he's like, you got to check out Godless. I was like, yeah, dude, I think I got that in the docket coming up in a month or so. He's like, no, dude, you need to stop what you're doing right now and, and watch. go watch it. He's like, I don't know if you want to finish this dinner right now with me. You might just want to go watch really? it. Really? So he was pushing this hard if, on me. If Joe tells me to do something, I'm pretty much going to do it. So that's and what I did. said. That's what I said. I mean, I still took my time. I finished dinner and all that <laughs> stuff. But like, <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> but great recommendation. This movie's great. Or a TV show, sorry. Well, yeah, you, you mistakenly said movie because- it could be every film or every uh, every episode could be its own film. So it's a western. Uh, so basically, how it's set up is there's a town of that's only women or like 
95 percent women because uh, because most of their husbands it was, a, it was a mining town right and the and the mine uh it it blew up it uh, ignited with yeah it was a gold mine it a coal ignited mine. coal i think it was coal wasn't it coal it, it was some kind coal of sounds matter. more combustible it had, than yeah, gold it, it it uh it combusted and killed not well, 85 yeah whatever 85 men most of so, most of them so now you have a town mostly run by women okay that's great also, what happens in the beginning of the episode is you see a massacre at a train uh, accident. Sure. Massacre. And there's just all these dead bodies in some gang. There's a gang led by Jeff Daniels. Yes. Who uh, is a terror, like an awful yeah, gang. He's the biggest outlaw of the West. And then you have a guy who is... Uh, Who's a sharpshooter steals their their haul and from it's, that it's, robbery? It says partner turned enemy. So he was on Jeff Daniels, but then he uh, you robbed him, right? Right. Okay. So then, uh, so the so the guy that robbed Jeff Daniels heads to the town full of women, and Jeff Daniels is looking for him. And the marshals are kind of like, okay, we got a the heads up. We got right. some stuff He's going on, on his way. So that's how it's all set up. That kind of gives you a wide berth. Of what's going on? Great yes. visually. Yeah. Western, Outstanding. fantastic. Uh, Patrick, why don't you talk about it, and then I can talk about some things I liked. Well, I, I definitely liked it. I know it's it's a lot of dialogue. What I was finding myself upset with was how slow it was moving. Okay. Because I know last week I got a lot of uh, goofs and gaffes about how slow-moving Punisher was. Punisher was kind of slow, yeah. And so this movie, there this week, I think this one was just as slow, but I hear you guys praising it, like you're so great about it. Mm-hmm. I'm not trying to harp on who's the better docket master or anything. I'm just right. saying, like, some, some shows move <laughs> slow, some shows well, move fast. Let me push back. If we're, we're, doing a, we're doing a Patrick Dale battle podcast, of course. Okay. T- I think the reason why I don't think this one went slow is because you have a Jeff Daniels as the you know main outlaw. He's got his own story. He's got his own tales. He's got his own portion of this first uh, episode. You got Roy Good, his partner gone enemy, and how he's involved. He has his own thing. Then you have the uh, – what's the female lead here? Uh, doesn't matter. The yeah. female lead. She's great. She has her own tale, and so like that goes its own way. So you have three storylines at least that are in the first episode, and you have Sam Watterson, who's a um, who's a marshal going from county to county. Four stories. So he, we have four stories in the first episode, and you're watching them almost, and they all come to a head. They all come to a head. So you're you're preoccupied in Punisher. You had the Punisher, right? Well, I would I, I push back a little bit on that, Patrick, because. I think with the Punisher, because I already saw the movie, I kind of knew the backstory. Mm-hmm. So I was kind of like, You were okay. taken a lot away. I was like, okay, come on. I know this. I know this. I know this. So with this one, it was all new. So I think that's kind of why I, I maybe I had a little bit but, different. Yeah, that, that, that just, when you're overlooking a train wreck and it's just panning over it, like you can see like there's dust in the air. Like visually, I was on like, I was like, this is amazing. Yeah. This is like. HBO quality, like top notch. Like you're not going to find any better. Like, was it you that said Westworld meets Game of Thrones? Yeah, that was Patrick. That was dead on. I, I yeah. I well, when I said it, I wasn't don't, meaning. Don't don't doubt yourself. <sighs> okay, fine, fine. <laughs> cut it all. Just cut all me out. It's Westworld versus Game of Thrones. <laughs> it's it's very good. It's yeah, very good. No, and on that point, what was. Something that impacted me, I think, the most visually was, yeah, the color was great. The color had that gray, mm-hmm. had that Wild West, uh, dirty look to it, of course. But then also they used a ton of depth of field, which you don't see a lot in like a series. You see it in like series. Explain movies. that, please. Depth of field is where you have, let's say you're, um, okay, so your lens is at zero feet, right? It's it's flush. You have something at two feet out, and you have something at ten feet out. So the thing at two feet out is blurry, and the thing at ten feet out is in focus. And then you can rack the lens, if you want to use a technical term, and then the thing in two foot is in focus, and the ten foot thing is out of focus. So you use a different lens for something like that. And for a show, like think about Seinfeld. Here's a, here's okay. a blatant example. They have a one camera. It doesn't zoom at all. And everybody walks into Jerry Seinfeld's apartment, and the things on the table are in focus. The people who walk behind that into the door are in focus. It's all it's you know it's all in focus. Sitcomy. That's my term. Exactly. For it. Okay. But then when you're using shots, Office-y. that 
<laughs> yeah, office <laughs> right, exactly. So everything's in focus. But when you're using a lens that will you know add that depth of field in, that makes something just so much more striking, whereas there's a ton of stuff that's out of focus and then a main character or some character is in focus. That you don't see that in a series. You see it in movies, but you don't see it in in a television series. So immediately, I was like, "Okay, somebody shooting this is trying to make striking visuals," and it was there. Beautiful color, the depth of field, as I just explained, was there. Um, color and, and light was very interesting too, and in how they use that, especially in this episode where a Roy Good rolls into after that a uh, gunfight with Jeff Daniels. It goes in on a horse to the uh, town that's all women, and it's at night, and like she can only see through. It's not lightning strikes, is it? Or is it like a moon through the? Is it moon through the uh, clouds? Beautifully, uh, dude. Visually I lo- beautiful. I loved and hated that because it was so accurate in the sense that hey, you don't have electricity, you can't see anything at right. night unless it's- you're by this little tiny candle. And- and but I was like watching. I was like, I can't see anything. I'm like, well, they that's how either. they felt. Yeah. Like, you know, so I couldn't be upset about it. Patrick, made, what you, the, sorry, go, go ahead. ahead. There was a point in the movie where, or the again, the a point in the show where the surgeon in the beginning he's holding up like a lantern to Jeff Daniels, and you could hardly arm. see anything on the screen. But when he pivoted the lantern around the back of his arm, oh, oh, that was okay. Oh, so oh, minor my. spoiler: Jeff Daniels gets his arm shot off. Oh, my. And only a bone is connecting and, the two portions. And the, the only arm. reason you know that is because they pulled the lantern the light around, around, to the, around it. Because it's, I mean, it's the it's the Wild West. There's no running electricity. Right. I mean, if you don't have a candle at nighttime, you can't see anything. Right. And so we the, should all be thankful that we have running electricity. I in our have house. both AC and DC lights in here. I know. Uh, the that's what we do at the 1890 Studios. We, all, 1890 all, Studios. <laughs> dot com. All current, all all uh, electric currents. AC we, we and DC. All. IPs. We have uh, the main woman in the uh, mostly female town shoots Roy Good when he rolls in after the gunfight at night. And she says to him the next morning, you're lucky there was no more moon. You're like it was a cloudy night. There was not a lot of moonlight uh, or else I would have shot you in the head. And so that's, again, it like tells you, like you see that whole scene where she shoots at him and he grazes his neck um, because, yeah, no, no electricity. Again, it all brings it back to like beautiful lighting, beautiful color, very, very well shot. Super excited to keep moving. What else did we? I would like to add that, you know, I don't, Dale, you got all the great like terms, like movie terms. I just have what I know as a normal dude. You're just the raw blunt. Yeah. I I think it's a smart movie. Okay. Or a smart show. Do like, do explain. So it's, it uses terms in the Wild West. It's like, they're like talking about, oh, you know, he was ra- he was riding on the narrow from uh, seat from Cities to whatever. You don't know where those towns are. Yeah. The narrow means a narrow gauge train. Yeah. So like they use words that like When's the last time you were on a narrow gauge? Uh, I think I was going to Silverton to Durango. Tur- that's the only way I know what that means because yeah. you and me rode that train, the the, the narrow train, <laughs> narrow track, narrow gauge. Yeah. You know, so I was like so then you have to, you, first of all, when you're watching it, it doesn't. it's not slow because I'm trying to understand the verbiage they're using. They're sure. using verbiage from the Wild West that they use, and you have to get up to their speed. Right. They're not dumbing it down for you. So that makes you work as a viewer, which sure. I really like. Yeah, it was all like that. It all very, it felt very Wild West. Um, in pretty much everything. I mean, you're talking about ling- linguistically. She's teaching her son. Uh, the the female lead is teaching her son to speak, and he, he says something. I'm trying to remember. He, uh, I thought he w- he were dead. Yeah, he was dead. No, he were dead. He were dead. And He's then like, she tells you. Yeah, or she you tells him would would have been or whatever was not were. Yeah, whatever. I it, thought you was dead. It's it, it still it still go linguistically. It 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 touches on you know. Yeah, you're right, Adam. Everything Wild Westy. Po- so that is was here. that was one thing, and then combining that with the lack of light in the Wild West, something that also I thought of was, you know, you living out here in the Wild West, you got no entertainment, you got no TV, all you have is work, like mundane, boring. Right. So when someone comes and talks to you, and they talk very slow. And they give you the whole story. You know, if this guy was telling me a story, if 
the marshal was telling me a story, but like, okay, is this a long story? I probably give be a, be a little smart ass to him and say that, like you know. <laughs> but when you re- but I I just felt like I was in this time frame where I this is the most entertaining thing that's going to happen to me probably this week, maybe this month. Yeah. Is this guy telling me this stupid story? Yeah. So I'm listening to every detail, yeah. and I that came across to me very well. So yeah. like it it merged me into the time frame very very. Very do- and that, I was to say very good, but that's not right. But I couldn't. Well. I couldn't correct to say very you, well. You're trying to speak very. If you're Wild West, say good. I was trying. Very good. I was trying so hard not to say good, but <laughs> good was all that was going to come out of my mouth. <laughs> Patrick, what do you think? Man? No, I, I like. I like that point that you just made because, like, up until where he starts telling that story, it's very slow. It's very mundane, and then you start getting the story. And then you kind of get like s- really like sure. sucked into I'm talking about the Law and Order guy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah he starts telling well, the real story behind it, it. That's what's interesting too. We we start off this first episode with uh, kind of the aftermath, and Roy Good rolls into the wo- mostly woman town, and we see uh, Sam Watterson go into like the the total killing massacre that happened. And then. Towards the last quarter of the episode, we understand why Roy Good came in with a couple of bullets in him and why all those people were massacred and stuff like that. So, yeah, it kept you there the whole time. Like, you, you saw all the massacre. You saw Roy Good getting shot. What the heck's it all about? Well, it pays off in the first episode. I really had to have some serious discipline to go into our next film um, and not keep going into Godless. Yeah, and I like I, I like that we're kind of like exploring like wide open that first episode of the pilot, but the whole reasoning like when they start telling you all the backstory and everything, I think that's really what got me. It wasn't the first half; it was the second half sure. of the thing. So the explanation, yeah, I think that it it kind of comes back around where it starts filling in the details that you missed in the beginning, right? And the details that you missed in the beginning, like if you just see those straight out. They're gonna be like, oh well, it's just gonna be a high paced show. But right. When they come back, I don't know the way they the when they, payoff, way they the pay, the juice is worth the squeeze. Oh yeah, for definitely. sure, definitely. Uh, well, t- we've been praising this one enough. Let's let's do rewatch. Recommend Adam. Looking at you. Yeah, I'm gonna watch it. I'm gonna watch it all the way through for sure. Yeah. As soon as I get a break from my podcast. Oh, oh we're so demanding. <laughs> but yeah, recommend rewatch. Good, good, good. Yeah. All around good. Cool, Patrick. Rewatch recommend. Yeah, I I. Ran out of time last night to watch the second episode, but, yeah. like, if I had half an hour more, I definitely would have plunged into the second app. Right. I can't, I, I, I want to finish this and so go. Real, real quick, sorry to yeah. throw you off, guys off, go but on. do you make this, the notes, in the order of the show, the way you watch them? No. Or how do you come up with that order? I go by how I felt about each movie. <laughs> okay. So far, it's al- al- alphabetical. By the looks of things. Oh, I guess the details. <laughs> we, we don't count the. So you yeah, do, the, you do, the, you do the note flicks. So you arrange the docket in a way that you feel makes the best show. Correct. Okay. He's a showrunner by default. Just oh, how the sausage is made. Guys, right. please, it's, it's please. All the backstory. Please, the praise. Please keep it coming. So I'm going to do rewatch recommend, and will I rewatch the first one? I probably could. If I if someone listened to the podcast and said, hey, man, you guys praise this so much, I want to watch it right now. I'll be like, boot up the first episode. I'll watch it again with you. Sounds like you listen to the right podcast. Uh, exactly. And I like where you're at. Thank you, Aiden and the Shoes. Um and uh, recommend, uh, rewatch, uh, recommend, yes, I'll tell everyone to watch it, I, and I cannot wait to keep going down uh, all seven episodes, right? Seven? Correct. Liquor Store Isle, Adam, what do you got? What can you compare this one? We c- at the Netflix Explorers, we compare a liquor or uh, you know s- some sort of consumption to how this movie is. It's a comparison. It's not like a pairing. It's more of a comparison. Adam, what do you got for this one? I gave this one a High West Double Rye Whiskey. Oh. So it's made with uh, two-year-old, like, 95% corn mash, and then you bring in, like, a 16-year-old corn mash, and you mix it all together to make the double. That's what they call it, double rye. A nice blended rye. So it's just a West, you know. They, sure. You go into a saloon, you kick the doors open, right. and you say, give me a shot of that High West, and... I'll give you a nice shot glass. You're drinking neat and it's dirty and dirty, down and dirty, down and dirty. Nice, Patrick. Liquor Store Isle for Godless episode one. Well, the last western we did was Stagecoach, and that was Bathtub Moonshine. Okay, 
this one is like a very well made moonshine. Uh, Ooh, it's it's like a Kyle moonshine. Shout out to Kyle yeah, from Texas. The, he makes the a Kyle great moonshine. moonshine. Yeah, that good stuff. I mean, it's sweet when it hits your tongue, and it's just going down smooth. But then all of a sudden, you realize you drank too much. Trains are exploding, and you're going all over the place. You don't know what's going on. So it's. Kyle Moonshine, that's what I think it is. What about you? I like it, man. I got written down, this is a bullet whiskey. He, uh, Sam Watterson is the marshal, rolls into a bar, and he says, uh, do you got any old bonded? And I'm like, old bonded? Where have I seen that before? It is for, It is on the bottle of bullet whiskey. It says old bonded whiskey, blah, blah, blah. So I attribute this uh, show uh, well played to a little bit of bullet whiskey, which is a uh, fan favorite. So belay or belay, I call it belay because you I know think it's bullet, but it's probably bullet, but it's not spelled like bullet. It's like, why'd you put an eye in there? Yeah, it just doesn't matter. Exactly. <laughs> so <laughs> that's why. Isn't it? And that's what. And that's it's it's a mysterious drink title. So it's like a, I want to keep going on the mysterious show. You know, the series continues. I want to keep going. So anyway. No, it's Belay Whiskey. So what is it? It's Old Bonded Whiskey. So that's what I got. Last one up, Jim and Andy, 2017. This is a documentary. Um, a behind-the-scenes look at how Jim Carrey adopted the persona of idiosyncratic comedian Andy Kaufman on the set of Man on the Moon, which was a 1999 film. 7.8 IMDb. Hit it, Adam. So, Jim. Yes? How would you start this movie? Jim's got a big old beard. Mm. Big beard. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Jim Carrey, and how are you this evening? All righty then. Finding out you have something special and it gets a reaction. That's how I got attention and love. I watched the stars fall silent. That's R.E.M. right Andy there. Andy Kaufman came in to turn reality on its head and not stop when the camera stopped. You, you're a- Andy Kaufman cared less about making his audience laugh than keeping them confused. He blew my mind. When I heard I had the part, I was looking at the ocean, and that's the moment when Andy came back to make his movie. Hello. What happened I after was a original documentary. <laughs> That's enough. Perfect. I don't like it. I want to do one more. Andy felt it was necessary to stay in the character. He's exactly the way Andy was. It's totally surreal. Paul Giamatti, Danny DeVito. This crazy melodrama started happening all over the place. For nearly 20 years, behind-the-scenes footage has been limited. Who's they? Universal didn't want the footage we took behind the scenes to surface so that people wouldn't think I was an asshole. Andy, you have to give me a chance to make a movie. I don't need to make a movie. I don't need to make a movie. I was thinking, how far should I take this? I see. Sound check. Sound check. It's working. How far would Andy take it? I like to get some provocative. That's for mental stress. Something. When the movie was over, I couldn't remember who I was anymore. So you step through the door not knowing what's on the other side. And what's on the other side is everything. If you believe, they put a man on the moon. Man on the moon. I know him as well as I can know him. But uh, who do you know, even when they're right in front of you? Jim and Andy, the great beyond. It's a Netflix documentary. Netflix documentary. Adam, what do you think, man? I liked it a lot. Okay, I'd like to Jim Carrey fan from the past or not? Oh, dude, how are you not a Jim Carrey sure. fan? Sure, like Mask, Ace Ventura, yeah, Dumb and Dumber, right? Liar, Dynamite. liar, Dynamite, Dynamite. What do you think of this one, though? This one is really, real as far wow. as I was gonna say, wow, mentally. Like what you got to invest, yeah. What you got to invest in this one to pull out like the the, the nuggets of this film. I really don't even know where to begin because uh, yeah, it was right. like it was it was really cool. It right. was so Jim Carrey is basically they go they got their hands on this footage behind the scenes of a movie he which did. I'll stop you right away. The person who was behind the scenes filming him, Andy Kaufman's girlfriend. 
before he really? died. I, I think before we, we really dive into the Jim Carrey, we had to dive into the Andy Kaufman aspect of man, it. Man on the Moon. Did you guys know who Andy Kaufman was? I never saw him. Man on the Moon, I never watched Man on the Moon. The, the movie, I knew it existed and had a very cult following. Yeah. And so I never paid attention to it. But um, what I found the most interesting about this was, you know, you know actors that like get into their role. And you know, um, uh, who's the, uh, I'll drink your milkshake, um, who's that guy? Daniel. Um, yes. Whatever his name is. He gets into, like he was Abraham Lincoln. And Daniel Day-Lewis. Daniel Day-Lewis. Thank and you. he was Abraham Lincoln. That was going to drive me nuts if you didn't say that. He was <laughs> Abraham Lincoln for like a year before he shot the movie. He just lived and breathed and became that character fully. And drank milkshakes. Right. And so Jim Carrey playing Andy Kaufman became that character. Um, worked really hard at, re- you know, did super research on that. What I found super interesting is on set, the family, Andy Kaufman's family, came on set. He talked to the father. Um, the father's bawling his eyes out because of how he portrayed Andy, made him just think of his, you know, deceased son. And that was super, I mean, the sister and the mother, I think, both talked to him. It, it was insane to watch how much someone dove into a character and created something like this. So I don't know if this is mantle worthy, but so a lot of it's behind the scene footage. I don't think we mantled documentaries. Okay, but anyway, move along. Well, the the lady holding the camera the entire time is Andy Kaufman's girlfriend, actual girlfriend, right? So she was there, kind of like telling Jim Carrey, like this is what Andy like. I don't want to attribute what she was telling Jim Carrey as what he was portraying. But, How he was acting, right? But she was there, and she was kind of, like, confirming that this is how he would do it. Like, this is... And so... So he had to bounce what he was doing off no, no, of no, no, her. No, 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 no. Oh, okay. I, 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 I don't want to attribute any of what Jim Coff, Jim Carrey slash Andy <laughs> Kaufman was right. doing, but she was saying that this is how Andy would act. This is, she was affirming that sure he was this acting is, this like is how him. it would happen, and then right. everybody's telling everybody that this is how Andy would act. Right. And so when I was young, my my father is a big Andy Kaufman anti comedy kind of guy. Okay. And I get a lot of my humor, my dark humor from from stuff like that. Yeah. Okay. So this this movie kind of hit really close to home for me because both my father and I kind of share the same sense of humor moving forward. He was a big Andy Kaufman fan when he was young, but okay. his father kind of just, my grandfather didn't really care for him. Right. So it's kind of a very acquired taste. Like you said, a cult following Yeah. for who likes it. And if you don't like it, there's a reason why. And it's maybe you don't understand it. Maybe you don't know why it's funny, but if you are in on the joke, you know, that's funny hysterical right and you're just and how, yeah first of all he does it yeah first of all you gotta be in on the andy kaufman guy you gotta be in on that humor right then you gotta be in on jim carrey what he's doing for andy kaufman in his interpretation so it's a double whammy of going down the rabbit hole getting on board right but you know we we talked about before on this podcast about you know documentaries usually have an agenda they usually have some kind of agenda they want to make you feel a certain way sure and they probably got me on this one. Okay. I walked away thinking, holy crap, Jim Carrey is an amazing actor. Right. And you never think that. I think Dumb and Dumber, Liar Liar, Ace Ventura. Sure. He's just being Jim Carrey. Right. And he's a funny dude. Yeah. Dude, in this role, he yeah. is like, he is immersed. He's Andy Kaufman. He's willing to go to the hospital and be Andy Kaufman. Right. Yeah, like, you disregard like like his past... Um, like who he portrays, and you look at Jim Carrey, the man, yeah. and how he dives into this <laughs> single character. And what I kept thinking of was Tropic Thunder. You know, when, uh, what's, who's the actor's name? Uh, Robert Downey Jr. Robert Downey Jr. is playing the, I'm the dude playing a dude disguised as another dude. You know, that, <laughs> yeah, like, he was doing that. Right. I thought about that the whole time, and yeah. like, that's what Jim Carrey was doing. So it was a good, like, analysis of, like, dude, you were that person for this whole time, and like, what did that do to you? He's like, right. 
I didn't even know who Jim Carrey was when I came back to him. There was like, a, there was a lot of stuff in this documentary where the director would be like, "Man, you know, like, you know, Jim, we got well, let's go out for dinner on Friday night," and he would be like, "Well, I'll tell Jim," and he's looking at Jim Carrey, he's like, "I'll when, tell Jim." Well, the thing behind that is like he's playing Tony Clifton at that point, right? So there's there's Andy Kaufman. who is an Andy Kaufman character, maybe, and then there's there's Tony Clifton, so there. There's Andy Kaufman and there's Tony Clifton. They're two totally different personalities and personas and everything. Right. Um, some people say that they were both played by Andy Kaufman, but some people also say one was played by uh, Andy Kaufman and the other was played by um, his partner. Um, yeah, I can't remember his name, but I know he's in there. Yeah, so he has he has a like creative partner, and some say he was played by him, but it's, it's a whole thing. And when Jim's playing... Uh, Tony Clifton, he's 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 he is Tony Clifton at that point. He's right. not Jim Carrey anymore, and he's not Andy Kaufman, and he's definitely not Andy Kaufman. Right. So yeah, so just to be clear, um, Jim Carrey play. You know, Andy Kaufman's a very uh, quiet and um, off putting, soft spoken comedian, it's, and Andy Clif or Tony Clifton is a loud mouth, uh, over the top. Yeah, very over the top. Like, obnoxious 80s. comedian yeah so uh jim carrey plays both of these in the movie but what's forget about man on the moon the movie in this documentary he never turns off tony clifton so he would be in certain situations with a director or with other actors and even like if you watch a trailer dan and devito was like oh my goodness this guy you know Jim Carrey's out of control. Well, no, it's not Jim Carrey. Especially when you see Danny DeVito saying that. Right. (laughs) He's like, (laughs) and Paul Giamatti's in this. Yeah, and Paul Giamatti's like, man, he's really losing it. Like, I'm going, at the end of the shoot, I'm hugging Tony Clifton. I'm not hugging Jim Carrey. Like, good shoot. Good job, buddy. It's it's not like that. You're saying goodbye to Tony Clifton. That's what was cool. They said in the documentary that, like, um, you know, it felt like, the mo- there was a better movie going on behind the scenes than with the actual movie itself. Right. And now you're seeing all the footage behind the scenes like Jim Carrey's in the makeup ca- in the makeup trailer arguing with Andy Kaufman's dad as Andy Kaufman. Right. And people are crying like over this argument because it's a true emotional experience. Yeah, and he's like totally well, in the, the character. It's the actor of Andy Kaufman's dad is He's beca- he's in his character in the makeup room, arguing with Jim Carrey, who has become Andy Kaufman, arguing, and it's it's a father son fight, and the makeup women that are in there dolling them all up, they're crying because of how emotional and how real a father son fight is going on right now. It's it's incredible, and we see, yeah, we you know Jim Carrey, yeah, good man, you're really funny in this movie, this movie, and this movie. The he the way he dove into this character was astonishing, and it's like something I've never seen. You know, Daniel Day Lewis was you know Lincoln, and he really dove into Lincoln, and that was kind of funny. Like on Twitter, it was kind of funny, but Jim Carrey, um, just totally just immersed ab- immersed himself. In you know, what was really cool, and then you take it, Patrick was he was like he was like going to the point where he's like. I was so into the character. I thought to myself at one point, like, oh my God, like, everyone's going to start to hate me. And he's like, you know what? This is just what Andy Kaufman felt like. Right. Like, he, the more he dove into yeah. the rabbit the hole, deeper he, like, yeah. Yeah. he was like, well, what would Andy do? And he would keep going. And right. it was like, it was like nuts. He left himself behind. Right. In every sense. It's like, well, what would the media think of this? Well, an and no one knows this because it's freaking Jim Carrey who's like, already then. Yeah, like, yep, you know, he, like, he's just a goofy guy. He's right? a goofy guy, right? No, no, no. This dude is a serious. And what's interesting is I've been watching Jim Carrey on a few things recently. He's been on a few talk shows and his he's got some like religious beliefs that a lot of people are like blowing out of the water right now. He's kind of talking like, you know, we're all, these are all vehicles. Oh, he's a whack job now. Oh, he's right? a whack job now. But regardless of like what he thinks like religiously as a person diving into a role i have never seen 
anything like this. And, you know, you hear of this, again, for the 19th time, Daniel Day-Lewis totally took on the Lincoln role. In this, he... I've never seen something so immersed that he's like fighting. Andy Kaufman challenged a wrestler in the WWF in those days to a fight. Jim Carrey, as Andy Kaufman, off camera, was talking all this shit to a, a to a WWF guy so much off camera, in not even on film, that he he freaking punched him in the face or something like that jim carrey so andy kaufman wrestled jerry lawler back in like the 1983 right. or whatever and they're making this movie in like 1994 or something so they have jerry lawler on set well it came out in 99 but either or way. 99 yeah, yeah. so andy andy so jim carrey was on set with jerry lawler and he's like antagonizing him like an older brother would pick on his little sister sure. and everything. So the whole time they're going back and forth and then like Jerry Lawler doesn't understand or they told him and he just doesn't want to understand that like this isn't Jim Carrey you're talking to. This is Andy Kaufman that you're right, talking to right. and he's going to act the same way. And it's weird because in real life, Jerry Lawler and Andy Kaufman were good friends. Like they had bits together and everything. But for the movie, for Man on the Moon with Jim Carrey... He said that, uh, well, I don't know if Andy would respond this way. So the entire movie, on screen, off screen, he was antagonizing him. He was calling him an sure. ape. He was doing all this crazy stuff. Yeah, in stuff. the makeup and, trailer and everything, yeah. Yeah, so he was he was always pressing his buttons. And then at one point, there's the scene where in real life, Jerry Lawler does a pile driver to Andy Kaufman. Right. And so they're about to do it on screen for Man on the Moon movie. and Jim Carrey as Andy Kaufman says, no, it's not going to look real. It's not going to look believable. He's like, well, we can't do it. The insurance studios don't want us to actually do it, blah, blah, blah. And he's like, well, I know how to push his buttons, so I'm going to make him do it. And then in real life, Jerry Lawler kind of puts him in a headlock, and then Jim Carrey gets carted off to the hospital. Right. So there's, there's a lot of backstory to Man on the Moon, and within the backstory... Of making Man on the Moon, there's backstory to Andy Kaufman and Jerry Law. So there's right. there's lots of layers to it. Yeah, and it's a great movie. Yeah, it's very deep. Yeah. It made me feel like if you watch Man on the Moon after watching this documentary, you're going to be disappointed. Well, and I was going to ask you guys: Did you watch Man on the Moon at all? No, nope. no, nope. Patrick, you did. I watched it with my father. Yeah. Okay, so you you and I I did not. What'd your dad think about that movie? My dad, my like I said, my grandfather wasn't big on Andy Kaufman, but my dad was. Right. And so it's all that anti comedy comedy that I take like that's that's primo stuff for me. Right. So that's passed on to you, you would say. Yeah, like we he laughed at it, so I laughed at it, but the appreciation passed on to you. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's it's a very hard skill to master in myself. Like I don't think I could ever come close to what right. they're doing. Anyway, yeah, it's it's good. Yeah, it's the Man on the Moon's good. This documentary is better. Yeah. Well, I mean, that backstory is crazy. I mean, Jim Carrey totally immersing himself in both uh, Andy Kaufman and that... Uh, Tony Clifton. Tony Clifton. It is incredible to watch. I, I I feel, though, I wish I will see um, uh, Man on the Moon. I think I have to watch that. Just to... I want to be fully immersed in it. So... That's just where I'm at. Uh, I don't know. Is there anything more to add for this one? Man on the Moon isn't on Netflix, so. Ooh. Are you going to uh, show this documentary to your dad, big Andy Kaufman fan? I I would love, if I could find, what is it, 94 minutes to sit down with my dad and we get to watch this, I would be ecstatic. Dad, I know you're listening. Call me up. We'll watch this together. <laughs> yeah. And you gotta make it happen. I, I'll, I'll try and report back next week. But he's a busy man. I'm a okay. busy man. Okay, we'll make time. Don't for be anything. all cats in the cradle. Get on that. <laughs> there you go. You gotta jump uh, over the moon. Tell you what. Uh, rewatch recommend. Adam, what do you got? Uh, yeah, I would recommend, and I'm gonna rewatch this. Okay, for sure. Just talking about it, I feel like man, there's some parts I wanted to follow up with and Super watch again deep. you can pass some stuff up there's really yeah i think i pass a lot up okay honestly because yeah. i was kind of watching it doing other things i wasn't i didn't give it a full attention You're right and i was like i found myself doing something i was like wait what what was that like yeah. you know so it's it's i'm definitely gonna give it a rewatch and i would recommend it to anyone that's 
I mean, just to see Jim Carrey where he's at now. Sure. Wouldn't you like like to know that? Like, that's kind of where. And it, that, another thing, just to plug the film, uh, it was so interesting that it was Universal, right? Universal wouldn't let him ex- like send like they uh, they wanted it. They wouldn't it, expose his. Assist? They wouldn't expose the behind the scenes stuff he was shooting because it, they thought it would make him look like. Excuse me, make him look like an idiot. Yeah. Now in 2017, it makes him look like a genius. Yeah. So interesting, uh, Patrick. We watch recommend. Oh, definitely. I I will definitely rewatch this. I yeah. will absolutely recommend this. And that being said, like when I'm looking at like top five actors in the world, like mm-hmm. usually it's like Leonardo DiCaprio, Daniel Day Lewis, all that. I don't know. I'm pushing Jim Carrey higher and higher up sure. as we go yeah. because they did a little uh, plug to uh, Sunshine or Eternal Sun- Sunshine of the Spotless Mind. Right. And in that, I was like looking at it through the new scope that this documentary put on it. It's about it's, him. It's polarizing. Yeah. 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 No, you're right. I'm I'm on board. I'm I'm definitely going to rewatch one. I'm definitely going to re- recommend this one. Um, the recommendation side of me goes, Hey, if you want to see how one of the greatest actors of our generation, I will say Jim Carrey is one of the best, um, of our generation. If you want to just really pound home how outstanding of an actor he is and how much work he went, you know, went into creating these characters, um, the, the, emulating. Oh, well, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Replicating these characters really was beyond anything I've ever seen. It was, it, it was incredible. So I, I will. If anybody was watching, I'd sit down and watch. And if anybody's wondering, definitely go watch it. Outstanding uh, on all fronts. It was a great documentary. I um, rarely, and I even text Adam. And this is not what we do. We save it for the cast, as we always say. But I texted you guys last night. I said, Adam, nice work putting this one on the docket. This was a super great watch. So um, we got to bring down a liquor store aisle, though. We got to bring something that kind of compares a liquor with this film. Adam, what do you got for this one? So I kind of, this made me think of getting a drink with some, with an old friend who you haven't seen in like 10 years. Okay. So Jim Carrey's that friend. You guys haven't seen each other in a long time. Sure. You know, they've been putting stuff on Facebook that you're not really, oh, man, what, what's going on with these guys? And they, all the blue, they say, hey, you want to meet up and get a drink? You say, yeah, let's do it. So you meet up with them, and you have an old-fashioned, and yeah. you guys sit down, you have a hard drink, and you talk about what's going on. And they tell you a great, you, they tell you about your life, and then you're so fascinated with them. You're just, you're proud that, like, that's what happened to them. Right. So it was kind of like, I was sitting down with Jim Carrey, an old friend, who I've known from many movies growing up, and just to talk to him now and see what's like, you've been doing some crazy stuff. Like, what's going on with you now? Yeah. And then, like, he just kind of spills his guts to you and lets you know where he's at. You just sit there and you just, you're drinking and you're just absorbing it all in. You're sure. just fascinated by it. Wow. Yeah, no, that's exactly right. That's a that's a perfect drink review. Uh, Patrick, what do you got? Bring us on Lake Straw Isle. So th- this this was a real like emotional pick for me. I know it sounds bad out of the gate, but my dad would always drink like Milwaukee's Best or Miller Lite or anything, and I always think of that stuff. Like when we go to White Sox games, my dad would always get a Miller Lite. So I kind of paired this with a Miller Lite, yeah, but with my father, right? So it kind of it really hits home. Like it's not that it's the drink; it's the company that you keep with you. Sure. So I've really liked this movie because of the bond that it put with me and my father. I, I don't want to sound all No, go watch no, it with him. No, go no, watch no, it with him. Not... He, would, he would like it, so no, go no, watch it with him. Yeah, exactly. There's no, uh, don't hide from the sappiness. That's yeah. perfect for that one. Um, this one I got, it's not really a drink. This is more like a super illicit drug. I'm kind of taking it off the wheels a little bit. Uh, scalopamine. This is like that crazy drug that you're hearing a lot about, scalopamine, where... You like blow it into somebody's face, and it's basically a mind control drug. You guys hear about this at all? <laughs> you can look at these documentaries. Scalopamine. Is that what you were blowing in her face earlier? Well, yeah, and you guys all agree with me, right? Scalopamine <laughs> is taking the country by storm. So, scalopamine, like hookers in Brazil, are like blowing it in rich guys' faces. And they go, all right, why don't you bring me to the ATM machine, or ATM, I should say, uh, and take everything out of your account and give it to me. And the guy goes, okay. It's a mind control drug. 
Made by the globalists. It's a globalist movement. So in this one, Jim Carrey becomes these characters fully. Not on screen, off screen, in the in the dressing room, in the makeup room, at his home, everywhere he is, he becomes someone else. He is mind his mind is someone else's. And that's what this one attributes to. So this is a scopamine and vodka. Um, I, <laughs> <laughs> I love Rocas. how you added that and vodka. Because <laughs> right. this is a little Las Rocas. Las, we learned that that way. Las Rocas y las Galopamine. <laughs> uh, but that's what I got for this one. Um, let's uh, let's get off the fence if we could, Adam. Movie of the week. Oh, tough choice, man. But I'm going to go Godless. Godless is the show of amongst the movies of the week. Patrick shaking his head. Patrick, move of the week. It's uh, Jim and Andy. Jim and Andy. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and side with Adam. I'm going to keep watching Godless. I can't wait to keep uh, going through the series, man. I can't wait to episode two, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so we want to thank you guys for listening. We are on Facebook. Hop up there. Adam is our Facebook master. He's up there controlling things. I don't know how well you're doing, but it doesn't matter. All our shows are up there. Comment, like, be our friend. We're on Twitter, which is my job, and I'm not doing too well at that, but that's okay. We are at the NetX, N-E-T-E-X. Uh, become our follower. Our shows pop up there, so you can listen there. Um, what else? We are at 1890studios.com. We have polls up there for one week from pretty much now is our one-year anniversary show. So there's questions you guys can answer. There's questions you can ask us. And we'll, we'll answer them on the podcast. We're going to give out awards. We've got some special guests coming in. It's right? going to be a fun time. It's going to be a good time. So go to 1890studios.com and vote and uh, pay attention when we come back up. Uh, iTunes, we're up there. If you guys are subscribed, we appreciate it. If you are listening on iTunes, really, let's hang on. I'm going to do this real quick. So I'm on my own phone. I'm going to go to podcasts. So start a countdown. All right, start. Three, One, two, okay. two. Keep going. Okay, keep it in your mind. All right. There's a Netflix Explorers. Two. So I'm going to go to Netflix Explorers. I'm going to go to rate. Okay. So I go to rate. I do five stars. Hang on. Let me go down to comments. Five stars. And then five stars. I'm leaving a comment. You guys are the best. And sent. All right. How long was that? 22 seconds. All right. So it's 22 seconds out of your life. If you guys could go on iTunes, leave us a rating, leave us a review. We'd really appreciate that. So... Um, Patrick, thanks so much for being on the podcast, brother. Not a problem. AP, across the table, per usual. Good to have you. Thanks, man. Thanks, Rusty D. Great, great guy on the show. You, uh, you direct us like a, uh, like a, like a conductor of a great symphony. Ah. May I say. Wow. Am I the... And you have the hair to match as well. <laughs> it's that bro... <laughs> Bro Flo Dale is <laughs> leading in the polls, I have to say. It's looking fantastic. Oh, uh, well, I, I appreciate that. Anyway, thank you guys for listening. We will see you next time on the Netflix Explorers. And as always, we say adios. And a read the dirt shade. Winston Churchill, play the game for more than you can afford to lose. Only then will you learn the game. Wise words from a dead man. They're the wisest. Some of the wisest. (laughs) They can tell you how not to die.